when my spirit, when your spirit, when you were born again, you're not a little bit like Jesus, but you're exactly like right. Jesus has taken up residence in every believer. Today on The Believer's Voice of Victory, Kenneth Copeland and Dennis Burke explain how that empowers the believer to be a manifestation of the blessing in the earth. Now here's Kenneth. Hello everybody. Welcome to Friday's edition of The Believer's Voice of Victory broadcast. Father, we thank you and praise you today. Praise God. We've had a marvelous week on this broadcast. And today's message, oh sir. We open our hearts to it, and we open our eyes and our ears, and we receive it, revelation from heaven, in Jesus' name. Amen. Dennis, Amen. pray this has been a good week. Oh, it has. Let, let's, uh, let's do something here. Uh, before we came on there, Dennis and I were discussing this, and this is an absolute description of, of where we are right now. I'm talking about where we are spiritually. See, you don't decide where we are. I'm talking about we. I'm talking about the kingdom of God. We, the, the moment we got born again, according to the first chapter of Colossians, the second chapter of Ephesians, the third chapter of Philippians, we were raised up together and made to sit together with him in heavenly places, and we were translated out of the kingdom of darkness and put into the kingdom of God's dear son. That's right. And Jesus said, you seek that kingdom and all these things will be added to you. It's not based on any earthly government or the lack of there. Right. Amen. That's right. And that, that's what, this is a type of that in uh, the book of Zechariah. Yeah. Let me read this in the King James, and then I want you to read that in the uh, New Living. Okay. Now, first of all, here was the situation. In uh, the 10th verse, it says, before these days, chapter, there was... Chapter 8. Uh, chapter 8, excuse me. 8, 10. For before these days, there was no hire for man, nor any hire for beasts. There, was, there, there, there were no jobs. And there, there was no need to hire out oxen or, or horses or any beast at all. There, there, there was no work for them to do. High unemployment. They're just total wipeout because of the affliction. Now, because he said every man was set against his neighbor. Now, I will not be under the residue of this people as in the former days, saith the Lord of hosts. The residue of the people is God's people in the midst of all of that. Yeah. We're, we're, we're kingdom of God people, and we're in the middle of all of this. The seed shall be prosperous, the vine shall give her fruit, the ground shall give her increase, the heavens shall give their dew, and I will cause the remnant of this people to possess all these things. It shall come to pass that as you were a curse among the heathen, O house of Judah and house of Israel, so will I save you and you will be a blessing. Fear not. Let your hands be strong. Amen. I don't care how ugly they've been talking about you, and I don't care how bad people think about all us old do-goody Christians and all that, but I'm telling you, the blessing is erupting among us and in, in us and around us, and people are finding out that the kingdom of God is alive and strong right in the middle of all this mess. Right in the middle. Now, this is a closer rendering to the Hebrew than what I just read. Read that, Dennis. Watch this. In verse, uh, particularly in verse 13. He says, among the other nations, Judah and Israel became symbols of a cursed nation, but no longer. <laughs> There's the word, man. That just, that jumped out at me one day. No longer. No longer. And for us as believers, no longer are we a symbol of what it looks like to live under the curse that sin brought. We are living under what righteousness has brought. Now watch this, because this was a statement that changed everything for me. 
in so many ways. He said, but no longer. Now I will rescue you and make you both a symbol and a source of blessing. So don't be afraid. Be strong and get on with rebuilding. Uh, Glory to God. Uh, yeah, be a, yeah. Those two words. A symbol. A symbol. Now listen to this. You know, I travel. I travel a lot as we all do. And when I come back into the United States, and, uh, and anybody's going to feel this way, I'm sure, about wherever they live. But uh, I come back in the United States, and I come down off that, uh, into that customs hall, and one of the first things I find in that hall is the flag. Oh, yeah. And I, I knew we landed at the right airport. I knew that I'm back in the United States. But when I see that flag, that flag symbolizes to me all kinds of right things for me. You know, I've lived under the government of that flag all of my life. And so it speaks to me. It's a symbol. Now, it symbolizes, it doesn't point to itself. It's not the flag itself. It symbolizes for us so many things. And the point that I get from what God has said here, he said, I'm making your life into a symbol of so many things that I plan to do, of so many things that I have established. I'm going to turn your life into a symbol of what it looks like to walk in blessing, to live righteous, and know that righteousness is, is alive in you. I'm going to turn your life into a symbol of what it means to be satisfied for the right reasons and to have a life that is worth living. I'm making your life, I've rescued you, that's the term he used, I've rescued you, and I'm making your life into a symbol. What happens? People see the symbol of a believer's life. Yes, sir. And it speaks volumes. Oh, it yes. speaks more than it speaks more than our words do. Yeah, it does. They see the blessing of God. They see prosperity in a person's life. They see healing. These things aren't to point to us. They don't point to how good we are and how good we've been. They symbolize how good this kingdom is. Yes, sir. How good this this relationship is. And that is the point of discovering how we walk in righteousness, walk in peace, walk in joy, the way God's designed His kingdom. And yet, here's what He says happens. Once I've rescued you, I'm making you into a symbol of two things. I want to symbolize my blessing in your life, but then I want to also turn you into a source of blessing. Now, that's, that's, that's where things start to shift. In a person's you life, you will be a blessing. You will now be, that, and a that's blessing. that's what God told Abraham. Yeah, that was. The and you know, point. in the in the third chapter of the book of Galatians, it literally states that God, by the Scripture, preached the gospel to Abraham, mm -hmm. saying. Now, if you want to know what the gospel is, I mean, if this is what God preached, and that's, so then it must be what Jesus preached, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. That's right. Everywhere he went, he preached the blessing. The blessing. Not only are you blessed through Abraham, but once you begin to live that by faith, you become the source of God's blessing to other people, yeah. and that's that's the whole that's the whole business. Adam's business was to expand the Garden of Eden until it became the whole earth. Yeah, right. That is his business. That's what he's supposed to be doing. Yeah. And that same, uh, that same purpose was, a, was promised to Abraham. God said, I will make your waste places like the Garden of Eden. Yes. I mean, it's, it, that, it's the same covenant. Just like the Garden of Eden. Yes. Yes. And that's who we are. And do that through his Abraham's seed, which is Christ. Yes. And now by faith, we're in Christ. And, and we we're become Abraham's seed. seed of Abraham. And that's our calling. So that very promise that God declared over Abraham is actually ours right now to do and walk in that same kind of blessing and to see that same power and result come through our life. 
You know, Dennis, I'm, I'm sitting here thinking about the, the men of you and I know, men and women of, of strong faith and, and valor. Um, their churches have become symbols. Yeah. Um, I'm thinking about um, Keith Butler's church. I'm thinking about Creflo Dollar. I'm thinking about... Uh, these different men and women of faith, Powerful. Keith Butler and, uh, and uh, Keith I mean, uh, Keith Moore. <laughs> yes, sir. And uh, different ones. Now, listen to me, pastors. Yours can be the, and it, you don't, it doesn't have to wait until it becomes tens of thousands. You can become a symbol of this when you've only got 40, 50 That's people. Right. And when it does, it'll begin to grow because people come to the, they'll rally around the flag. They'll yeah. come to that, that symbol because they, there's something in their heart no that the, those people are learning how to live. I better get over there and get in on that. Um, young man that partnered our ministry, and uh, he was born and raised in uh, Kazakhstan. And his family got saved on our broadcast in Kazakhstan. Well, then when communism fell, and, and for his dad said to the family, he said, now, we don't know how to live free. We don't know what to do with this. We're going to watch the Copelands. We're going to read everything they've got. They know how to live free, and we're going to learn through them. Listen to that. Well, what this, see, this became a symbol to them. That's right. And um, the time has come. That's Amen. Right. That's right. Every individual is really designed to to carry that kind of assignment within them. It's in there. It's inside of us. It's he said, I've there. rescued you, and I've done it for this purpose. Bill Winston said in, a, in one of his uh, messages, oh, just it, it just stuck to me. He said, when you accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior, and you were born again, inside you was born the seed of greatness. Seed of greatness. Oh, that, I like that. that magnificent? I like it's the that. seed of greatness. Yes, it is. It's the, you see, we were born again not of corruptible seed, mm -hmm. but incorruptible by the Word of God which lives about it. Yeah. Every seed already has in it the fullness of its future. Yeah. God's Word in the beginning was the Word, the Word is with God, and the Word was God. This is just as much a manifestation of God in the earth as when Jesus walked the shores of God. Amen. So <clears throat> when you begin to realize that we, we have enough technical understanding of this now to understand this in, in this way. When my spirit, when your spirit, when you were born again, you're not a little bit like Jesus. You're exactly like Him. The, 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 the same... The same spiritual seed yeah. which produced the same spiritual DNA in Jesus, which came from the Word of God, which was released through Jesus that got into me. Yes. Amen. That's right. When he calls us the body of Christ, we are literally the hands of the voice, Absolutely, the the carriers <clears throat> of the very thing <clears throat> that Jesus started to do in his ministry, the things that he began to reveal, the healing, all of the words and the teachings, yes. we became the very hands and voice of that same authority and that same that same power, and and rising up in that is is a has been something that God has had on his mind, and he has been putting it in our mind. I'm supposed to be, I'm supposed to be a manifestation of the blessing of the Lord. A manifestation where it's seen. That's who, that, that's what I'm supposed to be here. Yeah. All day today. Yeah. And people, uh, you know, uh, instead of us feeling like we are unworthy, we're not capable, we don't have, uh, you know, enough of the right thinking yet we've, we've got to learn how and it's it's a process in our head it's a head game for a lot of people to set that kind of fear aside this is why he followed it up instantly and said do not fear 
when he declared, I have rescued you and this is what I'm doing with you, so don't be afraid. And so we let go of the, the, the condemnations and the various oh, yeah. personal things that have uh, bound us to uh, the wrong kind of thinking and to kind of be earthbound. In the vision from a new point that of the view. Apostle Paul had of Jesus, he confessed to murder in that vision. He said, Lord, I, I mean, I did this. Mm. Jesus never even responded to it. Right. He didn't even hear it. Because he had already dealt with that. As far as Jesus is concerned, those are just dead words. He, he, he didn't even acknowledge that they, that they happened. Yeah. He just kept telling him what he told him. I had already told him you're going to go do. Yeah. And we need, that got so strong in the Apostle Paul. He labored under that, under condemnation. I mean, the man killed Christian people. Yeah. And here he is, an apostle. Yeah, how do you reconcile those two? Things? And he, he had to fight that fight. And that's the reason we can win with his very words. You just go from the book of Romans on yes, and sir. you see how he won that fight. And he <clears throat> won it. And he came to the place, <clears throat> excuse me, where he said, receive us, we have wronged no man and defrauded no man. Yeah. Now, what's he saying? He is saying, I have Jesus as my Lord and my Savior. I have been made the righteousness of God in him. And I believe that love. John said, we have known and believed the love that he has to. He believed that love to the point where, now here, here's the key. I confess this sin before my Lord. And the scripture said he is faithful and he is just to not only forgive, but cleanse me from all unrighteousness. Now, that's when I need to begin confessing that. I've confessed the sin. Now get over that. Yeah. Get out and confess this cleansing from all unrighteousness. Yes, I am cleansed from all unrighteousness. Forgetting those things which are past. That's that doesn't said. mean ignore them. Forgetting it. You confess that until it is blotted out of your memory yeah. just like God blotted it out of Yeah. If God can, we can. Yes, sir. And he, he wants to empower us to do it. You know what Paul was saying to those people? I never did that. Wow. That's how free and how far away from that he, he got. He said, I never did that. I have not done that. My goodness. We you live have, with a righteous mindset. Yeah. We have to live you with that You could give mindset. that man a lie detector test. Mm. It wouldn't even register. You know why? He wasn't lying. Yeah. Right. He's speaking the truth. Mm -hmm. I never did that. Mm -hmm. And the devil try to bring that old stuff back up to you. Just, just say, no, nope, no, nope, Satan, you're a liar and the father of it. No. See here, Satan. See what this says here in First John. Cleansed of all unrighteousness. See yes, that sir. right there? Now, uh, that deal you're talking about, I never did that. You know, one time uh, early on in Vicky's Christian life, she had one of the funniest things. She had gone to work at a at a uh, university and uh, she was in the office there and they had uh, j just by practice they would always give a little uh, kind of a background test and just personality sort of thing and not, not supposed to be anything to it. She took this test and, and it asked questions about her and had she ever stolen, had she ever uh, you know taken anything and if she knew that she'd never be caught would she slip into a movie without paying for it and things like that were were scattered through all of these questions. Well, Vicki was a Christian. She had given her heart to the Lord. And she answered these questions based on what was in her now, that she was free from all that. She was a new creation in Christ. Well, the next day she came to work, and nobody had talked to her. And they ended up, she finally asked somebody, what's going on? They said, we found out you are the biggest liar we have ever met. Because everybody would steal if they knew they wouldn't get caught. And yet you said you wouldn't. Well, she had made a, she had made a decision. She had already embraced that clean, righteous mindset.
Yeah. And she was answering these questions based on this new creation. And it got her in a lot of trouble. But you know what? She answered it correctly according, yeah. according to who she was She's in walking. Christ. She is walking in redemption consciousness. The, in the book of Hebrews, let's turn over there to the book of Hebrews and look at that. Oh, I mean, yeah. And this is what she was doing. And they did what the scripture says they're going to do. <laughs> Let every man be a liar and God be true. That's right. Now, when you look in this 10th chapter here of the, of the book of Hebrews, Dennis, for the law having a shadow of good things to come, now 10.1, and not the image of these things can never with those sacrifices which they offered year by year continually make the comers thereunto perfect or mature. They can't be, you can't, you can't fix what's gone before. And it goes on to say maturity to perfection. Mm -hmm. But for then would they not have ceased to be offered because that the worshipers once purged. Now, wait a minute. He just said over here in this first chapter that Jesus, um, purged our sins in the third verse when he had by himself purged our sins. Yes. He dealt with he dealt our with sins. It. Now, all we had to do was receive him as Lord and then in in future, when you do something wrong, I don't care what you did. Stop, repent of the thing right, right there and believe you received that cleansing yeah. that Jesus is faithful to do. The worshipers, once purged, should have had no more conscience of sin, should have no more sin consciousness. Yes, that's right. Then it talks about in the next verse or two there, no more remembrance of it. Mm -hmm. Don't re keep, don't remember it. Don't mm -hmm. recall it. If it comes up, just tell the devil he's a liar and say, no, sir. No, no, I'm cleansed of that. I never did that. That's right. I I'm done with yeah. that. I never did that. No. You know, King David did the same thing. He did. He got a hold of that exact truth. In yes, fact, it did. came by revelation. It yes. was huge. And uh, that's, that's the pattern, isn't it? Yes. Abraham did that. He walked away from that old life received righteousness by faith. And, uh, and the, it was the mark between the two of them, instead of running from God, they go to God. They ran to God. God handled it. Yes, he did. And has already dealt with it in the life and blood of Jesus. Amen. We're out of time. <laughs> my, 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 my. We'll be back in just a minute. Partnership distributes God's anointings. Through partnership with Kenneth Copeland Ministries, you have access to the anointing and graces on Kenneth and Gloria Copeland and their partners. And you become part of something bigger as your anointing and graces are now available to the Copelands and their partners. I know that the anointing is on him, is on all his partners. Being partners with KCM and with Kenneth and Gloria and, and everyone, um, it increases our faith also to know that you know what, they're out there doing it, and what, what God's doing for them, He can also do for us. Here's one anointing, here's another anointing, but when the Spirit of God joins them together, you've established uh, an anointing that didn't exist, but it's a combination of those two. We allow Him to join us in divine connections and so forth. It increases the anointing in both of them. hard about faith. Faith is really easy. It's just simply believing what God's already said instead of what somebody else said. Fear believes what somebody else said. Faith believes what God's already said. Come to a Kenneth Copeland Ministries event. The 2014 Branson Victory Campaign, February 27th to March 1st with Kenneth and Gloria Copeland at Faith Life Church in Branson, Missouri, USA. The 2014 Southwest Believers Convention, June 30th through July 5th with Kenneth and Gloria Copeland and their special guests in Fort Worth, Texas, USA. The 2014 Washington, D.C. Victory Campaign, November 13th through 15th with Kenneth and Gloria Copeland at the Hilton Memorial Chapel in Woodbridge, Virginia, USA.
As all of all you partners know, Friday's always offering day on the Believer's Voice of Victory broadcast because that's what the Lord instructed years ago. Now, just before the, just before we came back on the air, the word of the Lord came to me and said, Brother Dennis is supposed to receive this offering, particularly having to do with what we talked about today out of the book of Zechariah. Yeah, amen. Well, let me, t let me just reinforce this to you. This is, this is our opportunity to step into a place in God. Every offering is, but it's an opportunity to step into a place in God right now where this symbol and source of blessing that we were starting out with in this broadcast really comes into play. Let me remind you what, what I read here because I want us to spring off of this and lock your faith in as you sow and as you get ready to hear the voice of the Lord regarding this offering. Remember this, he said, I'm planting seeds of peace and prosperity among you. God's planting, and that's what's going on here by the Word of God. Yeah, the there is a plant. The Word, yeah. right? the word oh, being man. sown. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so as the Word is being sown in this, God is planting seeds for peace, and that's what we're laying hold on, and prosperity. And that's what we're laying hold on. But then he said it this way. He said, I'm rescuing you. I'm making you into a symbol of blessing Amen. and a source of blessing. Amen. And that's what our life is becoming because we're following his pattern. What does he do? He plants seeds. And that's what he said. So we plant seeds. You know this if you've been a part of this ministry and part of this broadcast. But I want faith to rise up in you today. And I want you to lay hold on this moment for you to sow in faith. So in Jesus' name, yes, Father, Lord, yes. we lay hold on this offering and on this, yes, this partner mm -hmm. with this ministry that this is the moment for there Thank to be you. a new place of blessing, of peace, and of prosperity in Jesus' name. Hey. You receive that? In Thank Jesus' you. name. Amen. Amen. Oh, thank you, Lord. Inquire of the Lord. Always inquire of the Lord. Always inquire of the Lord. So that as you, as you, you hear, you say, and you do. Yes, sir. And then you expect the Father that dwelleth within does the work. Holy Praise God. You missed any of the broadcast? Go to kcm.org. You can download them there. Go to church this weekend. We'll see you next week. Until then, this is Dennis and Kenneth reminding you again that Jesus is Lord. Kenneth Copeland Ministries is here for you. The BDOV is available on DVD or CD at kcm.org.au. For Asia, go to kcm.org.sg. You can also view webcasts online at your convenience or download them as video or audio files. Continue to grow in God's Word and build your faith with this week's product offer. These Word-based teachings will also help you live in victory. Order your copy today. Receive God's great grace abounding toward you and live in the blessing.